Let's give you a round welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes! Oh, it's time again. What are we going to do now? We're going to watch a fantastic PowerPoint presentation that I put together. Once the uh, slides are up and running, but uh, no despair because we'll do this out of memory. We do this out of memory. What I'm going to talk about right now is three things. The first thing, let's define what leadership is. There's a definition for leadership that is very specific. So we'll go through that. I might need my notes for that, but uh, we will go down that path anyway. After that, we will look at how do we, de how do we develop teams? How do we develop teams? And finally, the last part is, how do we develop individuals? Now if we, oh, we have a, a computer coming up here. Wonderful. The first part of leadership I would like to talk about is related to what will come up here. We're getting closer. We move on. Very good. You can see it all. Can you see it? Yeah. We've got two slides here. When I did this speech for this training session in Indianapolis last week, the district director came up to me and said, well, my theme is really be the leader you know you are. And I thought that was such a good quote that I wanted to put that up here for everyone because I think it comes well together into what we want to do, what we want to talk about, what we want to do in the organization. Because again, what's the, mo the uh, motto of the uh, Toastmasters organization? Where leaders are made. Where leaders are made, correct. So be the leader you know you are, right? Go in and define leadership. Have you, how many of you have heard of the uh, fable of the blind man and the elephant? Everyone. One to everyone. 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 Okay. But let's talk about the blind man and the elephant a little bit. And since you know the story, you know that one, man, one blind man walks up to the elephant to define what an elephant is, and he might walk up to the side of the elephant and say, yes, the elephant is what? It's a wall. Right? Now, if you look, take that and apply that to leadership, we might say that if we only do leadership based on an elephant, we say that leadership is you are a change agent. That's it. Right? We're blind. We only, we only have one thing to define leadership with. And then another blind man comes up and walks up on the elephant on top of the elephant, which I'm still a little uh, <laughs> confused about because you probably would find it touch the side to get up on the, on the top, but okay. So you're at the top and you touch the ears and you say, well, no, the elephant is really a fan. Right? And what's the example I put up there? It says, have followers. Maybe from a leadership perspective, it means we're saying the fan in the leadership approach is, well, we have followers. That's my definition of leadership. You can go through the back of the elephant. There's a little tail wagging back there. And what, and what do we say that, uh, that looks like? It looks like a rope. That's what the blind man says. It's like a rope. Let's put another leadership. Pops up there, have a vision. Maybe that means the rope equals a vision. Keep on looking at the elephant. Go to the tusk. People say it's a spear. Or we say leadership is empowering. Are we disagreeing with any of the leadership traits yet? We, we still think they're okay. Are we disagreeing with the traits of the parts of the elephant yet? They're all true, right? Is it an old picture? Not really. Where else do we have? We go to, we go to the feet. Or the legs of the elephant. And the elephant now is a tree. <coughs> Leadership is all about influence. That's an example. Is that enough? Probably not. What, what do we have left of the elephant? The trunk, right? And the blind man come up and say, well, the trunk is like a stink. So what's the last part I put there? Well, the leader delegates, right? So we got six images of the elephant. We've got six images of leadership. And it's only one of those images right if, when it comes to leadership. 
No, all of them are right, aren't they? Combined. Combined. Combined, we might actually build something, yeah, because again, the blind, blind men, when well, they come together and they talk about what an elephant looks like, this might be what it looks like, right? <laughs> but, but you have to combine things, and you still might not necessarily have the entire, good, the entire picture of what it is. So again, what I'm trying to do here with this speech is to break us down completely, right? Take the concept of leadership and just break it down, right? We're not in the Marine Corps where we're going to break each other down before we build each other up, but maybe a little bit like that. You know there is an alternative story to uh, the blind man ele elephant, right? The blind elephants and the man. And the blind elephants, they go out and shelter to find man, and they come back and they say, man is flat. <laughs> Let's not continue down that path, okay? <laughs> so what I want to say is this, this slide here, now it's difficult for you to see, but what I want to do, I want to... Go in and look at the bits and pieces as they want to change agent. If we are only a change agent, right? I'm trying to make an example of a change agent. And I'm saying that the drill sergeant in the Marine Corps is a change agent because they will change your behavior to something, right? So as a leader, if we're change agents, I mean, and only change agents and nothing else, well, we can think of ourselves as drill sergeants, and now we have to fight leadership. Do we feel comfortable with that definition? We need more. If we say, uh, have followers. Well, the examples that I found up there is Britney Spears, she's got followers. <laughs> Charles Benson has followers. So, are they good leaders? No. No, no. So there must be something else as well. Hmm? Translate vision to reality. Well, the example I put up there basically says, any politicians you do not like, pick your own, right? Because they have a vision. They wouldn't be in that position unless they had a vision, right? So are they good leaders now? There's something else, there's more. Empower others. We all talk about empowering. We want to empower, have the empowering leader, right? But there's a danger in that too. I take the example, you can become invisible because when you empower, you need to take a step back. But if you take a step back too far, you become invisible, and it's that leadership at that point. What's the most important thing of empowerment? It's actually up there on the screen. The follow-up. That's the most important part of empowerment. But is empowerment the only thing of leadership? No, it's not. Finally, having influence. Influence others. Well, the example I put there, if leadership is only influence others, if I write you a check for something, am I doing some influence on you at that point in time? Yes, I do. Right? So is that leadership? No, it's more than that. It's more than that. So there, we might have a perception that leadership can be defined by a single statement. That's what I want to break down. Break that completely and say, no, that's not really true, because really there are almost as many definitions of leadership as there are individuals who are trying to define it. I read a research article from 1992. They said they had 350 different definitions. I don't want to list those on the screen here, because it, it, it takes us nowhere. Right? So the definition of leadership is difficult. And yet, this is where leaders are made. So how can we do that? Right? The quote here, leadership is an evolving phenomenon that is difficult to pin down. And of course, a specifically widely accepted definition of leadership does not exist. What are we saying now? Well, we're making it up as we go. Is that what we're saying? Hmm? Because we want to have definitions, we want to have something clear, we want to be very clear on, on concepts, but yet we haven't been able to define leadership. Leadership is our elephant. Leadership is our elephant in the room here, right? That's a different expression, sorry. 
Now, Toastmasters International makes a definition of leadership in one of the manuals. I believe this is out of the HPL manual. The, the uh, statement here is, leadership is the art of persuading others to do what you wish. To succeed, you need to communicate, and you need to work as a team. Is that a statement that we can subscribe to? Does that make sense? Most of the leadership quotes and statements, they do make sense, don't they? Leadership might be also defined by your followers and the result of the team. Now that is my work cycle. You know the direction, how do you get others to follow? So those are really, well, maybe not my words, I've heard them somewhere, but I'll put it up there, there are no quotes. So they, now they're mine. Is that how it works? Don't put the reference up there, and now you own it. Can we subscribe to that? That yes, you, leadership of followership goes to hand in hand. Can we subscribe to that? Yes or no? Yes. It's a yes. Isn't it? Yes. Okay. Now look at the leadership, the leader, the individual as such. If you look at, there is a connection between a lead, the leader personality. Someone has a role as a, in, in the leadership position. Now leading, <laughs> you don't really get that as a job because that's uh, more a state of mind. Your job is probably a manager. But you can be perceived as a leader. Now your personality as a leader will in a way drive a certain leadership style. There are many leadership styles out there. They go from the authoritarian leadership style which we can uh, put into the group of transactional leadership uh, styles. It's a group of different leadership styles that are focused on the task, 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 task oriented. Or we can have a more open transformational leadership style, which is more inclusive. We want to include everyone in what we're doing. The empowerment, the servant leadership, the authentic leadership, all those different models that are so modern that can fall, fall into the umbrella of transformational. Transformational in that we want to change, we want to affect something. The transactional is more what we consider the managerial. We're focusing on the task, we're going down the task route. So a personality, the individual personality of the leader now, will define a little bit what style that individual will be drawn more to. And depending on the style that the leader is exhibiting, of course the attitudes of the individuals in the team will be adjusted accordingly. And how the team is functioning will depend on the same thing. What, what is the style that the leader puts in? If it's a very autocratic leader, there might not be much participation in the team. Hmm? I'll talk a little bit more about that. And that, in, in end, will uh, lead to the performance of the organization. So it all boils down to, really, in this case, this theory it boils down to that the personality of the individual. And that's all us, isn't it? Anyone out here that doesn't perceive themselves as a leader? Let's rephrase that. That's in there. <laughs> Can I see hands on how many perceive themselves as leaders? Everybody. I would expect everyone, actually, because you are, aren't you? There is all... And if, if we're not, we, there is always someone that looks up to you. And there's always a bit and piece in what you do that you are the leader for someone else. Now the question is, who are those someone else? I mean, you have a family. We might be parents. There's a leadership opportunity there where we're influencing someone and we're using all the other traits that we saw before. We're change agents. We influence, we want to empower name it, we have 324 more traits to put up. Really, but, but we're really working on it, we're all leaders. Back to the styles. You all heard about the analogy of there is the front of the room leader and there is the back of the room leader. And in some instances we, I see images that says, well, front of the room is leadership, back of the room is boss. I disagree with that completely because I see it more as a situational. And the little picture, what the reason why I disagree is that little picture there. Hmm? 
You see it all. I'm going to explain that picture, of course. <laughs> so if you if you consider a uh, your favorite quarterback, right? Whoever that is. This one happens to be a picture of uh, Aaron Rodgers. I talk about Peyton Manning when I'm there, and I forgot who was really the quarterback in the Bears because it's not the Colts. Now, if you look at the position of that leader, the quarterback, is that position in the front of the room or in the back of the room? It's in the back of the room, right? So the leader now is in the back and help orchestrating how we're going to move forward. Right? Is that leadership or is that bossy and management? I think it's leadership. So you're, you're putting your location in the organization and the location in the group depending on the situation. I'm not going to the conclusion yet because are there doing an example of an authoritarian leadership style? If you're an authoritarian leader, Stay away from Authoritarian leader. That's not what we want to see in a modern organization. We don't want to see an authoritarian leader. We want to see more the, the servant leader that comes in and, and makes us feel good and wants, wants to engage us in the decisions. Now, is authoritarian leadership wrong? What if you were a fire battalion chief? What leadership style do you need to have when you get to a fire. If you have a servant leadership style, a transformational leadership style, you don't want to say that, hey, come on everyone, let's go over here, there's a little bonfire going on over here. Let's sit around and discuss this a little bit. How do you feel about this fire? <laughs> what do you think we should do? Are, are, you, are you all in tune with what we're going to do? What's going to happen at that point in time? Well, the homeowner is, looking in there and saying, well, why don't you come and rescue me? I don't really worry about your group there at that point in time. I want to be rescued. So what do you do as a, as a fire battalion chief? Well, you come to the scene and they say, you, 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 go there. You, you, go there. Very authoritarian. And is that appropriate for that particular situa situation? Yes. Right? So the point made, made there is, well, the, mo the modern leadership approaches that we really want to take in all situations, because that's what everyone is telling us at this point in time, might not be the right style for that particular situation. So we have to look at the various situations and say, you know what, if I want to become that leader, the great leader, I need to have multiple leadership styles available to me in my toolbox. At some point in time, I might have to be like the fire battalion chief. Other times, I can be inclusive and I can bring everyone together and we're working towards a common goal and we're doing the, uh, the transformational leadership stuff. They are all valid. That's really the point I want to make. But if you look at all the different leadership styles that are out there, even the ones that you don't not like, they're still valid. It's a matter of using the right leadership style at the right time. There's a leadership style called deviant leadership that I find. Deviant leadership means you're breaking down your entire organization. It falls apart and everything is negative. No one wants that to have a leader that does that in the organization, right? No, right? You know, it's a setup. Because there, there might be a time when that, that is appropriate. And the example I'm doing there is Enron. Because the leadership style that you need there is you have to break down the organization at that point in time. If something's not working, you might call that ethical leadership if you want to, but in a way you're breaking the organization. And it's appropriate at some point in time. Most of the times it's not. Okay, we have to move on. Leadership can be anything. So building a team during the year as district governor in District 11. I had the chance to experiment. I've done a few speeches here in District 30 that some, some of you have heard, very limited, where I called Toastmasters a laboratory. A laboratory where we can experiment various approaches at various leadership styles and see what works. 
And I'm going to give you an insight into a leadership formula, team leadership formula that I'm also using at this point in time in a research paper that I'm putting together for my class. Yes, those of you who don't know, I'm also a doctoral student in global leadership. And I'm trying to validate this because as a theory, I say there are four things that we need to look at when we build together a team. And the first thing is we need to create something that is called a commander's intent. And that is, of course, taken out of the military. Commander's intent shows the vision, tells the vision to the group. This is what we want to accomplish. This is the end result, which means, well, if you have that commander's intent, that means that you do not need to be present at all times to make things happen. Because everyone knows where the end goal is. So you talk about the goals and you, and you empower the team to reach the goal, you do the following. But as long as the team knows where they're going, half the battle is won. And in my previous speech I did up here, I did the example from uh, Field Marshal von Moltke, who said that no plan survives the first contact with the enemy. And that's really where the commander's intent comes from. It comes from him with that thought that, well, the plan can be general enough. This is what I need to do. The detail of how I implement it, that has to be on the lower level. Commander's intent drives the end result. Second point, pick the team, it says up there. What it really should say is the right team members. And I got that inspiration from watching a movie. The movie is called Miracle. Miracle as in Miracle on Ice. The 1980 US Olympic hockey team, they achieved something that no one else thought was possible. They won over the Soviet Union hockey machine. And watching that movie, you can get some leadership lessons. You can draw some leadership lessons out of it, and you can make a keynote speech out of it. Like if you watch a race. But, but there are lessons learned, and I'm going to pick one, and that is for the team to win there, it was a matter of picking the right play. There's an episode in the movie when the committee had selected the best player for the coach. And the coach, Herb Brooks, basically said, I don't want the best players. I want the right players. I want the players that can work together in a team. So if you have the benefit of picking a team, look for the right players, the right members. So you have the commander's intent, you know what you need to do, you have the right people in place. Not always going to work, but if you have that mindset of finding the right team members, it's going in the right direction. Third item, trust. Here it says generate rapport and trust, rapport and trust. The trust is one of the most important things in any team. So you have the commander's intent, you have the right players, now you have to build trust. The group needs to trust each other, because we all have, have each other's back. We need to, uh, to work together as a team. Trust, very important. The last item that I say, provide the team with appropriate tools. What I'm saying here is, you have the right team members, they all bring something different to the table, and you have to look at, well, where are the gaps? And then you fill the gaps with more knowledge. Right? So as a formula, as a formula in general, we start with the commander's intent, we have the right players, build trust, and develop the individuals. Four things. Does it make sense? Yes. Makes sense? Simple? Can I remember it? <laughs> Maybe. The point is it needs to be simple. There is a gentleman called, his last name is Bennis, he's a professor out on the West Coast, written tons of books and authority in the leadership field. I put his form, leadership formula out here for just to see, well, how, how close is mine to his? And there are two or three years between me writing my formula and me finding Dennis' formula. So that's good for you to know as well. And he talks about attention through vision. There are four things important. Atten attention through vision, 
That sounds awfully familiar, right? Sounds like a commander's intent. <coughs> Talks about communication. Communication is the key. I don't think I had communication specifically uh, laid out. Trust through positioning, right? Trust, that was part of it. Trust important. The last part talks about developing of self, develop the individual. So it's not too far off what others say. So I, so I would still talk about mine. <laughs> because it's fairly close. Right? Any questions about the team? Thank you. Final. The final part that I want to go through is develop of self. Because, again, we broke you down. The leadership is very fuzzy. We don't know what leadership is. But we know how we can build up teams. And the key, the key really is to become a good leader. You first have to develop as an individual. And I've said that for years myself too. I can't help you unless I know myself and I can help myself first. Some people call that selfish, but I don't think so. Because again, at some point in time we have to look after ourselves, even if leadership, leadership can also be said, well leadership is not about me, it's about you as developing self or de developing everyone else. But we need to develop the self too. So what am I doing here? I'm going to challenge you all to think about who you are a little bit and define yourself. I've defined myself over the years and the people who know me from way past, they're probably tired of hearing me say three things because this is how I've defined myself. I've defined myself with three statements. Be present, do something, and focus on solutions. That's my form. Very simple. Be present, do something, focus on solutions. And that's way too small. Again, I've done some research because that is also going into my little research paper that is due next Saturday. I've got seven days to write it. It's only 20 pages. It's not too bad. But I have two days next week to do that. It's getting a little panicky. But if you look at it, right, be present. I mean, what does that tell you? It tells you that you're there in the moment. Not only physically, you're also mentally present. Right? Be present for each other. Do something. There's a quote from, uh, actually from the last issue of uh, Harvard Business Review that says the same thing. It says that uh, high power CEOs knows that it's better to do something than nothing. Better, better to ask for forgiveness than permission. It's better to do something wrong than nothing at all. Now, can you always do that? Not in all environments can you do that. But if you have that mindset that I really need to do something and not wait for someone to tell me, are you developing as a leader at that point in time? Yes, you are. You're driving things forward. And that's really the intent. And the last part, focus on solutions. Now, I know a number of individuals that basically, when you talk to them, every second word is a problem. They talk about things and say, no, that's a problem. We can't do it that way because that's a problem. I have a problem here with that problem because that creates a problem there that finally ends up in the final problem, which is we can't do it. You've never met people like that. You have. What do you want to say to them? You want to say to them, okay, I understand, there is a problem. I, I hear you. You stated that in the first sentence. Now bring me a solution. And when you challenge them that way and say, bring me a solution, what's the answer you usually get? No, that's a problem. <laughs> Everything is a problem because, because they, they are not focused on the solution. They're focusing on the problem. So the point here I want to make is, well, if you change that, turn that problem around and make it into an opportunity, then you're driving everything forward, taking things to the next level. Therefore, what I'm looking at 
as my own personal philosophy, leadership philosophy, is the threefold thing, which is be present, do something, and focus on solutions. And I think it has been fairly successful so far, since I started that in 2011. I think that's when, when I got that epiphany. And I've talked about it ever since. I'd like to end this presentation, because I see a lot of yawning here, <laughs> with a, a, a challenge to you all. Only one question. I've got only one question for you. And I want you to write that down. Who are you? Be the leader you know you are. Be the leader you know you are. And then, who are you? Ms. Ryder. Thank you, Magnus. You know, I've, every time you come to a Toastmaster event, you get re-energized. Be present. Always be present. And, I, and do something. You guys know I'm always going to do something. Focus on the solution. Mind is to be present. My mind is all over the place trying to figure out solutions instead of being present. And if you learn something new, thank you so much for reinforcing. <laughs> now, this is the end of this session. And the next session is going to be in here. What is it going to be called? Very good. Yes? It's on the back of everyone's agenda. It's on the back of everyone's agenda. Yeah. It's going to be Debbie in Salon C. So, everybody can... This room is all cleared out, and we're going to prepare for the contest.